13 ways a car dealer commits fraud, and most of it done right in the finance office. Lots of thugs in dealer finance, and they are groomed by none other than the dealer owner. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Dealers and their finance offices are ripe for an FTC investigation pretty much at any time. Yeah. And this is a big reason why you threatening an FTC complaint is so compelling to getting them to stop their nonsense. Just make sure you keep the FTC threat complaint to yourself until you're in the finance office. Right. While it may make you uncomfortable, cornering the finance officer is exactly what you have to do. He or she knows the dealer owner will simply make them the fall guy if the police or the FTC shows up. The stuff we are presenting here today commonly comes up in the news with sometimes dealer owners, but more often managers and finance officers going to jail when it happens. Why is it so often management level employees go to jail? Because owners pretend they were operating on their own, undiscovered by the owner. The right. managers get made to be the fall guy. Every time the FTC investigates a car dealership, multiple cases of fraud are discovered, much like the 13 fraud forms we'll discuss today. 13 forms of fraud seems like a lot, but it's not all inclusive. There are actually many more. If you wonder how dealers get away with this stuff, there are two answers. Number one, the agencies overseeing the auto industry are small with limited staff and financial resources. And it might actually surprise you if we say that's actually not such a bad thing. To Kevin's point, and as our viewer Joel Welch commented on our recent video titled Eight Illegal Things Car Dealers Do, he writes, You don't want these agencies to be big enough. Agencies that big find new things to do that have nothing to do with consumer protection. We agree, Joel. Agencies with tons of money and nothing but time on their hands could ultimately be quite dangerous. The number two reason that allows dealers to get away with this stuff has to do with our viewers. Not enough car buyers are aware that these things are crimes and subsequently fail to file complaints on the offending dealerships. You must play your part, friends. Indeed, you have to play a part, friends, to help stop this stuff. So here we go. Fraud type number one, power booking. <laughs> now, you may not have heard of this, but yeah. this is something that is done by the finance office when they lie to the bank about the trim level of the vehicle you are purchasing. Representing that a new or used vehicle has features or options that it does not have is fraud. They do this to artificially inflate the vehicle value to get a bank approval. Liz, you've noticed potential for this when you've been booking car values for viewers on BlackBook. The VIN doesn't exactly reveal a trim level, does it? No. Quite often, two or three options come up, and in this case, dealer finance officers are selecting the more valuable trim level. It's all in an effort to get a bank approval, which the customer might actually appreciate, but it cheats the bank. Dealers who mess with banks pretty much always get caught eventually, and when they do, they normally get sent off to jail. Fraud type number two, forged signatures. This is another form of fraud committed by dealer finance in the attempt to force the purchase of things like an extended warranty or a vehicle service contract and a number of other add-on items into the car deal without consumer consent. Fraud type number three, inflating the total purchase price above the sticker price by concealing options the consumer did not request or by including other unapproved and undisclosed fees. This is a crime of omission. They just put the stuff in your car contract without saying anything about it. Yep. Fraud type number four, falsely stating that optional features are required. Many of you are unaware that no seller of a given product can make the purchase of that product contingent on the purchase of other products. Right. That not only violates the FTC regulations, but violates laws in pretty much every state in our country. Could you imagine going to the grocery store and being told, I can't sell you that bread, ma'am, unless you buy butter and ham and cheese? And then most of our customers also get the mayonnaise. There's the good old most of our customers yeah. comment. Fraud type number five, advertising a vehicle for a certain price and then telling customers that the advertised deal is no longer available and attempting to sell them an alternate vehicle at a higher price, often known as a bait and switch scheme. Yep. We just mentioned this in a recent video, but bait and switch is so common, it earns repeated mentions. <laughs> Fraud type number six, falsely representing a used vehicle as being new, even though it was originally purchased from the dealership and then later returned. This would also be true of a vehicle a new car dealer allows one of its managers to drive for say 10,000 miles and then present it for sale as a new car. Fraud type number seven, claiming that a warranty offers protections that it does not offer or falsely representing an extended service contract as an extended warranty. We'll be back with fraud form number eight right after this message from our own Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out. Carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. 
If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Fraud type number eight, hiding a lemon vehicle or hiding critical vehicle information. When buying a used car, always run a vehicle history report and have an independent mechanic inspect the car. We don't recommend ever skipping that step when buying a used car. If a dealer misrepresents a car's condition to conceal that the car is a lemon or was involved in a crash, that is fraud. Also included in this is withholding any other important material information about a new or used vehicle. Fraud type number nine, odometer rollbacks. Hard to believe this is still happening. Manufacturers have taken many steps to try to prevent this crime, but it is still happening out there. Misrepresenting the total mileage on a used vehicle through an odometer rollback is still a more common form of fraud than most people are aware of. Fraud type number 10, misrepresenting a consumer's credit score or eligibility for financing in order to get him or her to agree to a higher interest rate or other unfavorable terms. This is a false statement made to you about your own credit by the finance officer. Yeah, and they say your credit is much lower than it actually is. Yeah. Fraud type number 11, falsely stating that a consumer who is leasing a vehicle will own the vehicle when he or she finishes making payments. <laughs> this is totally false. Totally. Fraud type number 12, allowing a consumer to drive off the lot with a vehicle under the false belief that a loan application is pending and then having the consumer return to sign for a different, more expensive loan. This is known as yo-yo financing. And fraud type number lucky 13, backdating new financing documents to the original purchase date. This is commonly a crime heaped on to the crime of yo-yo financing. Besides learning about ways dealers commit fraud here, you can also visit our friend Dan Whitney's channel. He's a terrific consumer protection attorney out of Maryland and has been on a mission to bust unscrupulous dealers for years. Many of these illegal activities we've discussed by dealers have been observed by law enforcement agencies in the motor vehicle marketplace and have continued for years in the face of repeated federal and state enforcement actions. More needs to be done to stop it. And remember friends, you're part of the solution to fixing the problem. This stuff happens so many times a day, there aren't enough law enforcement people to stay on top of it. You have to report it when it happens. If you learned something today and want to make sure you don't miss our future shows, you need to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can also connect with us on Facebook. If you'd like more in-depth information, please visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. A lot of frequently asked questions can be answered right on our website. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the process of buying a car without getting ripped off. Lastly, if we've helped you save time and money finding a car, consider showing us some love by leaving a tip at any of the links below. You'll see a super thanks button just below the video, and there are links for making a tip in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the read more button seen below. Thanks, everyone. All right, if you're new here to the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo and Elizabeth just reminded you, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.